We are so excited to have you here on this beautiful, sunny, and windy, windy Wednesday. I am Samantha, and I am a part of Epic Every Person Influences Children. We are so excited to have you here today for story time at Canal Side. This week, we are learning all about art. We have some wonderful partners here that are going to lead us in a super fun and wonderful Wednesday morning. Now, before we get started with our book, I know there is something that we have to do before we get started. Does anyone remember who might have been here before? What? What do we do? We do, we have to say thank you. We have so many wonderful friends who help us be here every Wednesday and we are so, so thankful for them. So we want to thank m and Bank, the Bauer Foundation, the Children's Foundation of Erie County, and our partners down at Canal Side for providing us this wonderful space to be at every morning. I also want to thank my friends at Deaf Access Services and Miss Joan, my wonderful friend here, who is helping us translate into sign language. So can we give a big thank you to everyone who helps us be here? Now I, we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, we are learning all about art this week. So I have a wonderful reader here to read our super awesome story. We are going to read Ish by Peter Reynolds and I have my friend Mr. Tyshawn Tyson here. He is a local Western New York artist who creates murals around the city, including the You Are Not Alone mural on Bailey Avenue. We are so excited to have him here today and we cannot wait to get started. So without further ado, I am going to hand over the microphone to Mr. Tyshawn. Okay, as mentioned, my name is Tyshawn. I am a local visual artist here in Buffalo. Uh, I paint murals, I paint canvases, I paint things of different sizes, shapes, textures, and forms. But today, I'm here to read you Ish by Peter Reynolds. So are you all ready? All right, I can't hear you. Are you all ready? All right, so if you have a copy of the book, you can go ahead and put your copy out. If not, listen carefully up here. I know I'm a bit of a distance from you, but try your best to kind of use your imagination and see the illustrations and kind of guide along through what I'm reading, okay? All right, so this is Ish by Peter Reynolds. Ramon loved to draw. I believe you have Ramon right here. Looks like he's doing some drawing on the floor. I used to actually do this when I was a kid, actually, a lot. So Ramon loved to draw. He loved to draw anytime, anything, and anywhere. Whether it's in his bed, whether it's up on an easel, and he looks like he's even used in a bathroom on this one, still getting his drawing on. One day, Ramon was drawing a vase of flowers. His brother Leon leaned over his shoulder. Leon burst out laughing, saying, what is that? He asked. So we got Ramon and his brother Leon asking about his artwork. Ramon could not even answer. He just crumpled up the drawing and threw it across the room. Leon's laughter haunted Ramon. He kept trying to make his drawings look right, but they never did. We have Ramon in frustration throwing many pieces of paper across the page, across the room in frustration. After many months and many crumpled sheets of paper, Ramon put his pencil down. I'm done. Ramon's very discouraged over here. Looks like he's ready to give up art. Marisol, his sister, was watching him. She said, what do you want? He snapped. I was watching you draw, he said. Ramon sneered. I'm not drawing. Go away. Marisol ran away, but not before picking up a crumpled sheet of paper. Hey, come back here with that. Ramon raced after Marisol up the hall and into a room. So we have Ramon and Marisol interacting. Now he's chasing after her. He was about to, he was about to yell, but fell silent when he saw his sister's walls. He stared at the crumpled gallery. So we have a two page spread of Ramon walking into his sister's room in which she's taking all his drawings that were crumpled up and she's been saving them and making her own type of gallery in her bedroom of crumpled artwork that he's been drawing. So it looks like Marisol might be a fan of Ramon. Yeah. 
This is one of my favorites, Marisol said, Pony. That was supposed to be a vase of flowers, Ramon said, but it doesn't look like one. Well, it looks like vase-ish, she exclaimed. So here's his vase-ish crumpled piece of paper on her wall. Vase-ish, Ramon looked closer. Then he studied all the drawings on Marisol's walls and began to see them in a whole new way. They do look like ish, he said. We have Ramon and Marisol observing the gallery of his ish artworks. Ramon felt, tight, felt light and energized. Thinking ishly allowed his ideas to flow freely. He began to draw what he felt, loose lines, quickly springing out without worry. So now Ramon's getting more creative. He's got his, she, Marisol's sister has got his mind kind of going and he's drawing more things in an ish type of manner. Ramon once again drew and drew the world around him. Making an ish drawing felt wonderful. So now Ramon is, his creativity is starting to flow even more, making more of his ish drawings on this page. He filled his journals. Tree-ish drawings, houses drawings, boat-ish drawings, afternoon-ish drawings, fish-ish drawings, sunrise-ish drawings. So we have on this other page on the right, all the different types of ish drawings that Ramon has been drawing now since his creativity has opened up. Ramon realized he could draw ish feelings too. Feelings such as peace-ish, silly-ish, and excited-ish. And in his drawings, you can see things of peace like wings or dove's wings. Excited-ish shows colors that make you happy like yellow, blue, and stars. And then silly-ish like goofy drawings he has. So he's really enjoying his ish style works of art. His ish art inspired ish writing. He wasn't sure if he was writing poems, but he knew they were poem-ish. He even wrote a poem that says, ponder, 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 dream yonder, pon, pon, yon, yon, gleam, wander, sign, Ramon. So his creativity is not just going on a piece of paper in regards to drawing. Now he's starting to spread his creativity into writing, other forms of creativity. One spring morning, Ramon had a wonderful feeling. It was a feeling that even ish words and ish drawings could not capture. He decided not to capture it. Instead, he simply savored it. So here's Ramon, blank canvas, blank paper, lay it out, enjoying nature, simply enjoying the moment. And Ramon lived ishfully ever after. As you can see on the illustration, there's lots of lines and loose things, things that complement Ramon's style of ish work that he's been doing. And that's the end, ish. All right, is everyone standing up and ready to move? Yeah. If you've been here before, what do we usually start with? You know? We usually stretch. I heard someone say it. So we're going to stretch our legs and our arms. We're going to reach all the way to the sky. Wiggle your fingers and touch your toes if you can. Wiggle your toes and reach up again. Touch the sky and touch your toes. And now we're going to put our arms to the side. We're going to try not to hit our partners next to us. We're gonna make a big rainbow all the way to one side. Good job. And all the way up and over to the other side. Ready, one more. Just kidding, one more, all the way. Good job, all right. Stand up nice and straight. Miss Leah, what are we gonna do first? We're gonna be fish. Leah loves fish, so we're gonna pretend to be fish swimming. So can you do your best fish impression? Swimming through the water? I don't know what kind of fish I am, but... Finding Nemo? Maybe we're Nemo or Dory? You are some good fishies. And swim back to your spots. Oh, we had some far-traveling fish. Good job. Alright. 
Let's pick two more animals. I want to hear you yell out a favorite animal. Okay, I heard a couple. I heard lizard nice and loud. Can we be a lizard? That's kind of tricky. Um, maybe we <laughs> get close to the ground and squirm and crawl like a lizard. Oh, those are some good lizards over here. You guys are super low. You're much better lizards than I am. And lizard your way back to your spot. Those are some quick lizards. All right, someone yell out our last animal. Cheetah? Did someone say cheetah? Okay, we're gonna be cheetahs. What do cheetahs do? They run super fast. So can you run like a cheetah? You can run on your feet. You can run on your hands and your feet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Careful not to knock anyone over. Super quick cheetahs. Good job. And go quickly, quickly back to your spot. I'm a little out of breath. So I think we're, we're wiggled out for now. March. In a circle, in a square, in a rectangle. We can march through each other. Good job. Good marching. March back a little bit towards your spot. And hands and feet together. Okay, Miss Leah wants us to act like bugs. So she suggested we all pretend to be bees. Can we be a bumblebee? I don't know how to be a bee. They have little wings. So we might have to, that's a very good bee. <laughs> but we're gonna be friendly bees. We're not gonna sting anyone. We're just gonna fly, maybe eat some pollen. Oh, there's a real bee. And fly back to your spot. Okay. Let's do one more. What should we be? A giraffe? We do giraffe every week. Okay. We're going to be a nice tall giraffe. Super long neck. My arms are my neck because I can't get my neck quite that long. Good job. Maybe we can run a little bit as giraffes. I've never seen a giraffe run, but... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got some crazy arms going on. And run back to your spot. Whew, okay. Let's take two deep breaths. Ready? Whew. One more. Breathe in. Okay, are we ready for your last activity? Yeah, you guys can take a seat. Thank you. Can you guys shout out some colors of the rainbow for me? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Oh, indigo, I like that one. And purple, right? Yes. So those, yes. So those are all the colors of the rainbow, right? And so we can see all of those colors with our eyes. So I have, this is what is called the visible spectrum. So we can see all those different colors and we can see, we can see dark blues, we can even see light blues, all different variations of them. All right, so what happens if we mix some of these colors together? What? They make new colors, right? So what happens when you mix red and yellow together? 
We get orange. What happens if we say we mix yellow and blue together? Green. And what about red and blue? Purple. Right. So it's cool that we can mix different colors together to get new ones, right? And so I have, I have this wheel from the museum. Do you see all the different colors on here? What, what do you think will happen if I start spinning this really, really fast? Do you think you'll still be able to see all these individual colors? No. What do you think is going to happen? I say it's going to, I heard it's going to turn maybe brown. Is that what I heard? So if I turn it this way, do you see, do you see all those individual colors anymore? What color do you guys see? Brown, yeah, brown or blackish color, right? So if you mix all the colors of the rainbow together, you get a brown black color. All right, so let me just put this back down. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, and so I have, we talked about colors here, but can you guys think of where you see colors or rainbows in nature? So have you guys ever seen a rainbow in the sky? Yeah. Do some birds have rainbows on their feathers? Which bird can you guys think of that has rainbows? Ooh, toucans. Yeah, they have some cool colors. Parrots. How about, I'm thinking of a bird that has really, really long tail feathers that puts them up. Ooh, a peacock. I heard a peacock. So I have some really cool peacock feathers. And you can see all the colors of the rainbow on them. And I also have this thing. Have you guys ever seen a shell with so many colors in it before? Yeah, isn't this pretty? This is called an abalone shell. This is from the ocean. So it's really cool that even in nature, some creatures have rainbows inside of them. And I also have this. Can you see all the colors on here? Yeah, this is a DVD. So you can see colors, or this is called iridescence in a lot of different places. All right, so now that we talked about some really cool colors, we are going to do our own color craft. So I made a sun catcher yesterday, and this is what you guys are going to be making now. I just let it dry overnight. And so we are going to use a coffee filter and some markers. So if you want to grab those out of your bags, yeah, you made one before? Very cool. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to draw whatever you want on your coffee filter with your markers. I'm going to do one along with you guys. So yesterday I drew flowers and some hearts. Maybe today I will do something else. All right, so I want you guys to get those materials out. All right. So then you guys can start drawing your design and then we're going to add one more thing to make it look really cool. All right, so I have all of my colors of the rainbow up here. I'm going to start with some purple. I know you guys have two markers. You can blend those colors together if you want on your coffee filter. Right. I'll give you guys a minute to draw your design. Alright, so I used the colors blue, purple, green, and yellow, and I made some cool little swirls on my coffee paper. And so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to use some water. So we have some 
of our friends that will go around with the water bottles here and we are going to spray your coffee filters. So do you think that your marker drawing will look exactly the same once you put some water on it? No, the colors are going to spread and if you put some primary colors next to each other like red, blue, or yellow, those are going to change colors. So it's going to look really, really cool once you add some water to it. So I'll add some water to mine first, just to show you guys. This is what mine looks like when I when I put some water on it. So the blue and yellow that was close to each other turned into green. And my purple and yellow kind of turned into some pinks. Alright, so I'm sure yours are looking beautiful right now. And so anybody with the spray bottles, I think somebody's going around now. We can take these spray bottles and you can add add some water to it. Yep, girls, you can take that one. Alright, do you want to take this one over here to your group over there, bud? Alright, and you girls. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so there are four spray bottles going around now. I don't have any more water for you, bud. I'm sorry. And so you guys can pass the spray bottles between the families, you can spray the coffee filters, and you can see those colors start to blend together. Hello! So I have some art for us today, and I actually have something called process art. And process art means that we are going to focus on the process, the steps that we take to make our art not the final product because you don't always have to make a final product with our art just like Ramon in our book he would make things like a vase ish or a house ish and so we have play-doh today to make things that we can kind of start with but we don't necessarily have to keep them forever because play-doh can always be reformed right so if you have a container of play-doh go ahead and take it out I want you to start playing with it a little, molding it a little. And for my adults in the crowd, Play-Doh is a really great fine motor skill. So if you have a little, little one, this skill is something they're going to need to work on. And Play-Doh is a really easy way to do that. So go ahead and grab your Play-Doh and start playing with it a little. And friends, while you're getting your Play-Doh warmed up, I'm going to show you some of the things that I made already with mine like a cube and after I'm done if you would like to come up and look at these you're gonna see none of them are perfect because all of my art is always process art because I'm always working on it I tried to make a flower I'm not sure how well it's going it keeps trying to fall apart I made a heart And the favorite thing I made, oh, it's already hardening. I made a snake. Oh, he's also falling apart though. <laughs> but friends, the point is you can do whatever you would like with your Play-Doh. You can make anything you'd like out of it. And if you'd like to make something different, you just smush it up and start fresh. So if you'd like to take a few minutes and try to make something with your Play-Doh, go for it. I know sometimes it's just fun to roll it into a really big ball. You can press your ball down flat into a pancake. You could make it into a cylinder. If you would like to start making a snake. But friends, the great part about the Play-Doh is it is totally up to you what you would like to make. Alright friends, 
I am going to hand the microphone back to Miss Sam. If you would like to keep playing with your Play-Doh, you can. Otherwise, you can put it back in your container to make something new the next time you open it up. Thank you. So, my name is Miss Jackie. It's so wonderful to see you all today. We are going to talk a little bit about color theory. And our friends from the Science Museum were talking a little bit about it as well. I brought a nifty little looking glass with me today and i have i have three primary colors that we're going to look at can you guys say that primary colors you guys are so smart oh i i heard some i heard some kiddos naming colors already i have can you guys tell me what this color is blue you guys are so smart and i can put it right into my looking glass and can you guys notice, can you guys see from there? Do you see me changing colors? Yeah? And I can look through this and I can see you guys changing colors too. I see you guys as little blue kids right now. And I have my other primary color. Yellow. Thank you, friends. And you guys can look through this. On today, you can come on up as well and you can play with my looking glasses. You look through it and everything turn, turns yellow. And finally, now this one might be a little bit harder to tell what it is. Some kiddos say it's orange, but yeah, you guys are so right. It looks red from here, and you guys all look red too. And we were talking about color mixing with our friends from the Science Museum, and these really neat looking glasses let you mix colors. What, do you guys remember what happens when you mix red and yellow? You get nice bright orange. Can you tell from there? It looks a bit more orange now. And let me see, what about red and blue? Do you guys remember? Purple. I like this one a lot. Very purple. You guys look so purpley from here. Let me see. We did red and yellow, red and blue. How about yellow and blue? Green. Remember a couple weeks ago we were uh, green speckled frogs? And let me see, was that everything? That was just about everything. Let's talk about some emotions that we might feel while we're looking at these different colors. We talked about purple just a second ago. I have some little eggs here and they have different faces on them. Can you tell what this face might be? Can you see it? It's an egg, you're so right. My egg is feeling a little bit nervous right now. When we look at different colors, even though like you might not think it actively, but they can influence our emotions a little bit. Can we act a little bit nervous? Do you guys ever feel nervous? Can you guys shake? You guys shake and you're feeling nervous? Okay to feel nervous? It's okay to feel nervous sometimes. Let's look at my next egg. And it's kind of similar to nervous. Can you guys see it? He has a big frowny face. He's sad. And he has some blue colors with him today. Do you guys ever feel sad? Yeah? Is it okay to feel sad sometimes? Yes, it is okay to feel sad sometimes. Can we pretend that we're crying? Ooh, can you cry? Oh my goodness. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. And I have this green one. I, I feel this one a lot. He kind of looks, he looks similar to nervous. And this little green egg, he looks shy. Do you guys ever feel shy? Can you guys pretend to feel shy? Might cover your eyes. Is it okay to feel shy? Yes. When do you, when, can anyone shout out when they feel shy sometimes? I, 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 I felt shy in the morning. In the morning you sometimes feel shy because there's no things to do in the morning, right? Maybe when you meet new people. I feel shy when I meet new people. Now I have another color with me. Can you guys tell what this egg is feeling? He's yellow, you're so right. He's feeling happy or he's feeling excited. Look at that big smile. Can you guys act excited? Oh, I see some big smiles out there. Oh my goodness, what big emotions we're feeling. It's good to feel those big emotions and it's good to feel happy. It's A-OK -okay to feel all these different emotions. And I have this one with a big smile. This other one was excited. This is another one, just feeling happy. Can I see another big smile from all of you guys? Feeling happy, feeling content. 
all these emotions are real and it's good to feel them at different times of the day. My last emotion, do you guys see this one? Oh, I'm covering up his face, I'm so sorry. Can you guys see him now? You're mad, yeah, mad. Mad, angry, frustrated. Do you guys ever feel those emotions? Yeah, I feel mad, angry, and frustrated sometimes too. And he's red, right? Sometimes we associate red with feeling mad, angry, or frustrated. And I'm seeing some kiddos acting mad, angry, or frustrated in the crowd. Can you guys act mad? Can you pout? Maybe stomp your foot? Is it okay to feel mad? It's okay to feel mad sometimes. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel frustrated. And But finally, when I feel mad, angry, or frustrated, what helps me feel better afterwards, I take a big breath. Can we all do that together? Big breaths help me calm down when I'm feeling mad, angry, or frustrated, and it's okay to feel those feelings. Um, in a couple of minutes, I have a bubble machine going so we can play with some bubbles. I think of, when I think of the rainbow, I think of bubbles because when you look through those bubbles, you see all the different colors, all the different emotions and things that we've talked about today. And I also have our imagination playground so we can do some sculpting, just kind of like what you guys did with Play-Doh earlier. I'm gonna pass my mic off to Miss Sam. Before